What PD would you most like to solve analytically? An unsolved one. Anything nonlinear diffusion, nonlinear reaction that nobody solved before. Yeah, anything like that, I'm happy to solve. Upcoming sim revisitor Bronwyn Hajek is Associate Professor of Mathematics at the University of South Australia. Hajek's area of expertise is in solving nonlinear partial differential equations, or PDEs. Partial differential equations typically describe how things will change in space and in time. And so they use them for all sorts of things, biology, cell populations, um, other populations, disease modelling, and then all sorts of physics problems as well. As an applied mathematician, Hajek's research can be used across broad fields, particularly in physics and biology. Her speciality is looking for analytical solutions to the equations that describe the world around us. So analytic solutions are where you can solve the equation and write down the solution um, using functions that we all know. And then what you can do is you can look at this solution and you can see how the different parameters of the problem will affect the solution directly. Hajek has recently been focusing on mathematical problems in biology. So biological problems are often described by an equation that might approximate what's going on because it's hard to know all the details. And so if you're writing down an equation that approximates what's going on, perhaps you can tinker with it a little bit. And then once you've changed it, you can actually solve that problem that's approximating what's going on. Hajek is an expert in solving differential equations with Lie symmetry methods. When you have a differential equation, if it's non-linear, and particularly if it's a partial differential equation, they can be very hard to solve. And so what the symmetry analysis does is it systematically looks for ways of rewriting those equations to turn them into equations that we already know how to solve. And it does that by exploiting the symmetry in the system. For example, if you're standing in the middle of somewhere and you look that way and you look that way and things look the same, you can exploit that symmetry. That would be a reflection symmetry and you can exploit that to change the equation into something that maybe you know how to solve. Or um, perhaps if you turn things upside down and they look the same, that might be a rotational symmetry. And so you could use that to change the equations perhaps to be something that you can solve. And so um, some of these things, like the reflectional ones and the rotational ones, um, they're quite easy to see if you are experienced just by looking at what the equation looks like. But there are many other kinds of symmetries that are hard to see or impossible to see just by looking at them. And so Lee symmetry analysis provides a technique to systematically search for these other kinds of symmetries that are not obvious. Lee symmetry methods are particularly well suited to analyse nonlinear PDEs. So Lee symmetries are really good to use when you have an equation that can't be solved using other standard techniques. So we're looking at things that are nonlinear, partial differential equations, which means things are changing in different ways. So they could be changing in two different space directions, or maybe they're changing in time and in space. The nonlinearities in an equation can sometimes give rise to more interesting symmetries. So these nonlinearities and the partial differential parts are what helps them to have extra symmetries that might be interesting apart from the normal ones. Hajek's upcoming SIMRI project will be applying Lee symmetry methods to shockwave seen in cell cultures. So a shockwave in biology might be where you have a sudden change, for example, in cell density. So there might be cancer cells here and no cancer cells here, and there's quite a sharp edge. Or perhaps there's a wound and it's been scraped away and there's skin cells here and there's no skin cells here and you can draw a line between those two different things. You can see this in action in wound healing assays. The assays use a time-lapse microscope to capture the regrowth of cells. Now, many of the existing models have used reaction diffusion equations, which are partial differential equations, and they use linear diffusion, which means that any solutions have like a gradual change between cells here and no cells here, and it makes a gradual transition between the two. And in reality, what you see is this sharp line that I described before. And so 
these sharp lines can come about by introducing nonlinear diffusion, but in particular backwards diffusion, and that will create these shock waves. Current models predict a gradual change from cells to no cells, rather than a sharp boundary. Creating and solving a model that will have these shocks in the solution is what's tricky. And so it hasn't been studied much in the past because it's hard, and so that's what we're hoping to do. Hajek will be collaborating with Dr. Robbie Marangel from the University of Sydney, whose research focuses on the dynamics of nonlinear waves, as well as Professor Martin Vexelberger. I am interested in how special solutions to partial differential equations evolve in time. These come from biology or physics mostly. I guess I've been slowly getting involved more into the biology frame for the last number of years, um, although I've done some work in optical equations and some stuff that has applications in sound. The researchers will be working together to improve established models of cellular shockwaves. So there are lots of these kinds of experiments, I guess, where they have, you know, where they can observe these sharp changes in cell densities. But I think the models that they've used in the past have just been the simplest model that they can write down because biological processes are really hard. There's a lot of things going on at once. And so because there's cells that are like clumped to either like a bone or they're clumped to some background or they're all glumped in together and they want to move towards whatever they want to eat or away from whatever is killing them. And so these processes are very much dependent on the cell density. And this is what's introducing a lot of the uh, nonlinear diffusion. And also it, there seems to be this notion of aggregation, which is being modeled as backwards diffusion. And that is a huge problem in a model. That's exactly right. So normal diffusion will have things moving apart and backwards diffusion will try and make them move together and you know more cohesively and as Robbie said that's when things fall apart mathematically. It can be highly challenging to approximate complicated models in biological processes. If you make a complicated model you really don't know what the parameters will be to characterize that model and so you write down something reasonably simple that describes what's going on um, and then it doesn't have so many parameters and you know you can help um, characterize your model but then you're missing some of the other things and you can't reproduce these kind of sharp fronts. I guess we're really interested in the mathematics behind these sharp fronts. Exploring models that include non-linear diffusion and backwards diffusion would lead to greater understanding of these cellular processes. There's quite a big math biology group in Australia and so you know, a lot of the problems that we hear about come from math biology and we look at them and think, you know, maybe the simple models of linear diffusion for these problems just aren't enough anymore. And maybe we need to start thinking about adding this kind of nonlinear diffusion and maybe backwards diffusion. The researchers believe that this is the first time that Lee symmetry methods are being applied to model cellular shockwaves. Lee symmetry methods are are just starting to become really useful for nonlinear diffusion, but nonlinear diffusion is still often positive diffusion. And to my knowledge, they haven't really been used before for backwards diffusion. It does pose a lot of problems mathematically and numerically. So it's hard to even simulate solutions with a negative diffusion. That keeps people away in some sense, because you can't even bang it into a computer and see what you might start to expect. You can't solve these problems numerically because they have these problems when you put in the backwards diffusion. So then the only way to tackle it is going to be using some of these kinds of analytical techniques to get some insight into what's going on. This project breaks new ground by drawing connections between Lee symmetry and the Evans function. The Evans function sort of dramatically is a function that tells you where the eigenvalues of a linear operator R and why is that important? So that like in some sense the, the Evans function is a means of detecting to first order the stability of your favorite traveling wave or wave or or solution to a partial differential equation. It's very hard to do this kind of thing analytically. This won't be the first time that Hajek has used Lee symmetry to solve nonlinear diffusion problems. In 2015 Hajek and her colleagues published an exact solution to the Arrhenius reaction diffusion equation. 
The Arrhenius law describes a huge array of physical and chemical processes, such as glass transition and combustion. And the problem with the Arrhenius law is that when the temperatures become very small, it's not very well behaved. Despite being proposed over a century ago, no one had yet arrived at an exact solution. So no one had solved this PDE since it was introduced, you know, all those years ago. And then my PhD supervisor, who I still work with, said to me one day, I think I know how to solve this. And yes, indeed, we could use symmetry techniques to solve it. And the thing that we had to do is introduce a small amount of nonlinear diffusion that's not very nonlinear, so it's very close to constant. And once you do that, then you can solve it analytically using these symmetry techniques and write down an analytic solution. And not only can you do this in one dimension, as if you're imagining combustion on a straight line, but you can actually do it in any number of dimensions and any type of coordinate system. The symmetry that we found works in all those situations. So it's really useful. This work paved the way for Hajek's further investigations into nonlinear diffusion. After we solved the Arrhenius problem, I could see that this technique was going to be useful for a wide range of problems. So any type of problem where you know that there's this kind of reaction diffusion problem um, where you can be a little bit flexible with uh, how you mathematically describe the problem. And I think the fact that we can solve these types of complicated equations has made more of a splash than the fact that we solved a really long-standing problem because people are seeing it as a tool that might be able to solve their problem. Hajek was recently part of a mathematical breakthrough to solve models for calcium fertilisation waves. Once we had all these tools now for solving these nonlinear reaction, nonlinear diffusion problems, I knew of this problem where there's a fertilisation wave on uh, amphibian eggs. So what happens is you have an amphibian egg, it's fertilised, say at the top, and then there's a wave of calcium ions that goes over the surface of the egg. And the purpose of that um, wave of calcium ions is to stop any extra sperm getting in and stopping polyspermy. And so these kinds of um, calcium waves were observed in about the 80s and they wrote down some equations that would describe what was going on. They could solve them numerically, but they couldn't solve them analytically. So the reason it's difficult is because it's got a nonlinear reaction term and so a nonlinear PDE is always hard to solve. The other thing that makes it tricky is it's going on not just in one straight line, but it's happening on the surface of the sphere. So you need to work in spherical coordinates and that changes the operator for the equation and makes it much harder to solve. The researchers arrived at an analytical solution in 2019. The model can also be applied to mammalian egg fertilisation. And so I took the non-classical symmetry techniques that we had used before and I could find analytic solutions to this problem. Hajek is currently collaborating with physical chemist Marta Krasovska on a project to screen ionic liquids. So ionic liquid is a salt, it's a pure salt, but it's a liquid at room temperature. And it's a liquid at room temperature because there's a mismatch in the size of the positive ions and the negative ions, one's much larger than the other. So a good friend of mine is a physical chemist and she did some experiments and observed that when you put a droplet of ionic liquid on a flat substrate, what happens is there's a very thin film pattern that forms around the droplet. These patterns can be observed with atomic force microscopy, or AFM, a powerful imaging technique for material characterization. And she can look at the thickness or the height of these thin film using AFM equipment. And what she found is that if you put a, a certain ionic liquid on a certain substrate, you would get different kinds of patterns. So different ionic liquids make different patterns. Some of them look like leopard spots, some of them look like giraffes, some look like zebras. Now, some of these patterns are very useful for lubrication and some of these patterns are not useful at all for lubrication. And at the moment, they don't know how to tell which kinds of ionic liquids will make a pattern that's useful for lubrication and which ones won't. So there's millions of ionic liquids and you know, choosing the right one is not easy. And the current models carefully look at interactions between each kind of atom. So they're very computationally difficult. 
And so when I saw these patterns and I saw that they look like animal skins, I thought maybe we can use the same kind of models that are used for animal skins. These kind of things are often modeled with reaction diffusion equations, which are the same kind of equations that I've spent a lot of time solving. We hope to develop a simple model that will give you some insight into which kind of ionic liquid you should try to make the kind of uh, thin film that you're interested in. Hayek describes two things that she finds most rewarding in research. The first one is working with people that I really like working with. It's really nice when you can solve a problem or get some insight or achieve something with someone that you enjoy working with. That's really great. The other thing I like about the research that I do is I really like finding the tricky, obscure, strange analytical solutions to difficult nonlinear PDEs that no one has solved before. That's really nice. 